Well, folks, and welcome to another edition of Lunch Time with Pastor Shane as we begin our uh, together time here before we have our alone time uh, with God. Uh, as uh, stated, if you happen to be join us, joining us for the first time, this uh, is not a Bible study, though we will read scripture together, and it's not a prayer meeting, though we will pray. It's not a hymn sing, although we will read some of the verses of hymns, but it's just a, a time that we carve out during this season of Lent to uh, really uh, get alone with God, listen to his Holy Spirit. What might he have to say to us as we uh, go through these scriptures and scripture readings today? So um, let's begin with uh, a little funny uh, story from the world's greatest collection of church jokes. Uh, this was uh, different little quips or sayings uh, for the bulletin uh, so that you could put in your bulletin. And it says, uh, one of them is, Tithe if you love Jesus. Anyone can honk. <laughs> then the wages of sin is death. Repent before payday. Worry is interest paid on trouble before it is due. And then you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. So some amusing little uh, quips that you might see in a bulletin uh, in some church at some point. As we begin our time together, let's go to the Lord uh, in prayer, inviting the Holy Spirit into our time. Lord God, you truly are the source of all truth, of all wisdom, as we uh, talked about on Sunday, but uh, also the, the source of all justice and love. So we are coming to you now asking for uh, you to send and pour out your Holy Spirit upon us during this time that we spend together throughout our entire day as we are reminded to serve you, as we are prompted by the Holy Spirit to do so, to witness uh, of your love to others. Help us to uh, constantly rest, or rest our lives upon your eternal foundations, your truth, your love, and uh, especially during this time, your presence as we get alone with you and uh, listen for your still small voice. Save us from the haste and confusion, from wrongful desires, from the net of evil. And through the inspiration of your Holy Spirit today, enlighten us, instruct us, and guide us both now and all day long. And it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Well, our uh, psalm is Psalm 143 this week. Yesterday, I read it, uh, I believe, in the New International Version. Today, I'm going to read Psalm 143 from the New Living Translation. So if you can turn to Psalm 143, this is a Psalm of David. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my plea. Answer me because you are faithful and righteous. Don't put your servant on trial, for no one is innocent before you. My enemy has chased me. He has knocked me to the ground and forces me to live in darkness like those who are like those in the grave. I am losing all hope. I am paralyzed with fear. I remember the days of old. I ponder all your great works and think about what you have done. I lift my hands to you in prayer. I thirst for you as parched land thirsts for rain. Come quickly, Lord, and answer me, for my depression deepens. Don't turn away from me, or I will die. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. Rescue me from my enemies, Lord. I run to you to hide me. Teach me to do your will. For you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on a firm footing. For the glory of your name, O Lord, preserve my life. Because of your faithfulness, bring me out of this distress. In your unfailing love, silence all my enemies and destroy all my foes, for I am your servant. Well, what word or phrase jumped out at you? Uh, what is the Holy Spirit bringing to your attention that you can uh, jot down uh, on your paper or in your journal? so that you can go back to that during your uh, quiet time with God. I think the thing uh, that caught me was verse 8. Let me hear of your unfailing love each morning, for I am trusting you. Show me where to walk, for I give myself to you. 
it's uh, funny how when we really make a focused effort on uh, paying attention to uh, what I call those God moments uh, each day when you're sensitive to what the, the Holy Spirit might have for you to do, whether it's witness to somebody or lend a hand to somebody, uh, they really begin begin to pop up um, on a regular basis. Uh, and so that kind of spoke to me. Well, the next uh, reading then for today, or our scripture reading for today, comes from Joshua 24, verses 14 through 28. So if you want to flip to Joshua 24, 14 through 28, I'll read this from the New International Version translation. Now fear the Lord and serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods your ancestors worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and in Egypt and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve, whether the gods your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are living. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Then the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord to serve other gods. It was the Lord our God himself who brought us and our parents up out of Egypt from that land of slavery and performed those great signs before our eyes. He protected us on our entire journey and among all the nations through which we traveled. And the Lord drove out before us all the nations, including the Amorites who lived in the land. We too will serve the Lord because he is our God. Joshua said to the people, <clears throat> you are not able to serve the Lord. He is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your rebellion and your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, he will turn and bring disaster on you and make an end of you after he has been good to you. But the people said to Joshua, no, we will serve the Lord. Then Joshua said, you are witnesses against yourself that you have chosen to serve the Lord. Yes, we are witnesses, they replied. Now then, said Joshua, throw away the foreign gods that are among you and yield your hearts to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, we will serve the Lord our God and obey him. On that day, Joshua made a covenant for the people. And there at Shechem, he reaffirmed for them decrees and laws. And Joshua recorded these things in the book of the law of God. Then he took a large stone and set it up there under the oak near the holy place of the Lord. See, he said to all the people, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. Then Joshua dismissed the people, each to their own inheritance. Well, I uh, don't know what may have um, kind of been something that was brought to your attention by the Holy Spirit. I think for me it was, uh, you are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen to serve the Lord. And then they, Joshua sets up a stone and uh, made me think about the fact that we're living stones. Um, as we are kind of witnesses that we have made this covenant with God that we're going to serve him. We're going to follow him each day. So each and every one of us should uh, walk around as living stones. Um, as uh, witnesses, witnesses that uh, we are living uh, for God and for his kingdom and uh, not for this world. Well, our reading then for reflection today comes from Creation in Christ by George MacDonald. So let's see what he has to say. And if you recall, our theme for this week is called Crucial Choices. So obviously each day when we get up, uh, Luke in the book of Luke, it says, uh, take up your cross daily um, and follow me. And so that's uh, a crucial choice that you and I have to make each day. But here's uh, what George MacDonald had to say to give us to chew on and think about. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we are come out of the divine nature, which chooses to be divine, we must choose to be divine, to be of God, to be one with God, loving and living as he loves and lives, 
and so be partakers of the divine nature, or we perish. And there was a lot in that. I'm going to read that over again because it's good. <clears throat> you know, as we think about the fact that we're image bearers, you know, we were created in the image of God. As we try to be Christ-like, we understand that uh, Christ is the exact representation uh, of God. Because we are come out of the divine nature, which chooses to be divine, that divine, our, um, we come from God and God chooses to be divine. So then we must choose to be divine and to be of God, to be one with God, loving and living as he loves and lives. And so be partakers of the divine nature or we perish. Man cannot originate this life. It must be shown him and he must choose it. So it's a choice that we all make. God is the father of Jesus and of us, of every possibility of our being. But while God is the father of his children, Jesus is the father of their sonship. For in him is made the life, which is sonship to the father. The recognition, namely, in fact and life, that the father has his claim upon his sons and daughters. We are not and cannot become true sons without our will willing his will, our doing following his making. It was the will of Jesus to be the thing God willed and meant him that made him the true son of God. He was not the son of God because he could not help it, but because he willed to be in himself the son that he was in the divine idea. So with us, we must be the sons we are. And obviously he's speaking in a more traditional language. It would be, we must be the sons and daughters that we are. We are not made to be what we cannot help being. Sons and daughters are not after such fashion. So again, we are not made to be what we cannot help being. Sons and daughters are not after such fashion. We are sons and daughters in God's claim. We must be sons and daughters in our will. And we can be sons and daughters, saved into the original necessity and bliss of our being, only by choosing God for the Father he is and doing his will, yielding ourselves true sons and daughters to the absolute Father. Therein lies human bliss, only and essential. The working out of this, our salvation, must be pain, and the handing of it down to them that are below must, must ever be in pain. But the eternal form of the will of God in and for us is intensity of bliss. So obviously that goes right along with our theme of uh, crucial cho choices today and really points out um, our free will that we, we have to choose uh, to be children of God, choose uh, to follow Christ, um, choose to be obedient, choose that life, uh, choose to surrender uh, our selfish uh, human will to that of uh, the divine will. Uh, and that's what makes us uh, sons and daughters and uh, true image bearers. Well, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer uh, for a bit here. I would ask you to just pray silently for those that are on your heart, and then I'll close and we'll finish out. Lord God, we thank you so much for this time that we have. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, for that gift that you gave us that we may be counseled by you and comforted by you as we need each and every day. And we uh, who are gathered around here uh, electronically, uh, we might say we have kind of formed a little sacred circle amongst ourselves. And we've invited your Holy Spirit in and we are praising you and giving you thanks uh, for the Holy Spirit that is in us, that is being poured out upon us and uh, whom we will be spending some time with now alone in the quiet. And uh, pray that you would help us to shut our minds down, that we might hear that still small voice. Uh, 
comfort any anxiousness uh, that is on our hearts right now that uh, whatever we are taught may be understood and felt and uh, that it might sink deeply uh, into our hearts that we may then live it in our physical bodies and uh, in doing so strengthen our faith in, uh, in our spirit. Lord, we do lift up those who uh, have been on our heart and minds this week and this day who are uh, in need of your healing touch, who are in need of your uh, healing touch on their physical bodies, their relationships, their spirits, their minds, and their emotions. Lord, we lift them all up to you at this time. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, our hymn, if you remember, for this week is uh, Arise, My Soul, Arise. It was written by Charles Wesley. Here's the second verse for uh, this Tuesday. He ever lives above for me to intercede, his all-redeeming love, his precious blood to plead. His blood atoned for all our race, his blood atoned for all our race, and sprinkles now the throne of grace. He ever lives above for me to intercede, his all-redeeming love, his precious blood to plead. His blood atoned for all our race, his blood atoned for all our race, and sprinkles now the throne of grace. That was so good, I had to read it twice. Well, now hear this benediction as we close. May the Lord make you strong to do the work of ministry that he has for you to do uh, today. Uh, and may uh, God bless you all richly as you go into your alone time with him today, whether it is now or later in the day, whenever you have carved out to do that. But hopefully you have heard some things from the Lord as we went through these scripture readings and prayers and and uh, listen to George McDonald give us some uh, deeper stuff to chew on. Uh, and you have journaled that down, and you can now go and sit silently with God and allow the Holy Spirit to really speak uh, into your spirit at this time. So until tomorrow, we'll uh, just pray blessings upon you and upon your day. We'll see you tomorrow.